Good evening, welcome. My name is Grace Valenzuela, and I am the director of the Multilingual and Multicultural Center for Portland Public Schools. This is an exciting time for all of you who are going to send your kids to high school next year. One of the things that we have to remember, I, I remember that where I come from, in the country where I come from, which is the Philippines, when you reach this age, you're sort of like free, right? This is the time when you are starting to move away from your parents. But when, when I was growing up, it was a safe, safe place. So the challenge for us in the new culture is that we have to let go, but with a little bit of control. So we have to hold our kids still tightly a little bit, but not at the point where we are, um, when we're choking them. So it's a really a little interesting balance. And it's really hard for parents to do that, for all of us. So this is, this, this, for the next year, we are going to talk about what the new requirements for graduation for our incoming ninth graders, and make decisions about which of our high schools because Portland is the only public school in Maine where you have a choice of which high school to go to. And that is really special for Portland. And actually, we are the only, we are the only um, district in the state of Maine with more than one high school. Is that correct? Yeah, more than one. <laughs> so we're a little bit special. Um, so we, we, today we also have our principals with us of the three high schools, Casco Bay, Portland High, and Deering. And we have a very, very special guest tonight who would want to talk to you and meet with you, and that is our wonderful superintendent, Javier Botana. Buenas noches. Um, that's the only language other than English that I uh, speak. Um, uh, I'm very, very glad to be here tonight. Um, very proud of being the new superintendent of the Portland Public Schools. Um, I've been um, incredibly impressed with everything that I've seen um, over the past five months that I've been here. And this is just one more example of why I feel privileged to be a part of the Portland um, Public Schools. Um, the amount of commitment that this community has to creating opportunities for all of our children, regardless of where they come from, regardless of their background, or regardless of their language, is something that is remarkable. And one of the reasons that I am so proud and happy to um, have the honor of being the superintendent of the uh, Portland Public Schools. Um, like many of you, like Grace, Ms. Valenzuela, um, I was not born in the United States. Um, my, I was born in Cuba, and my family left uh, Cuba when I was very, very young. I was um, about two years old when the Cuban Revolution happened, and like many of you, I've um, had the experience of um, having to leave the country where my family had 
um, lived for many, many years where they had, um, in my case, a business and, you know, obviously um, uh, extended family and had to move and begin a new life in a new country. Like many of you or your children, I did not speak um, any English. Um, when I started school in um, Illinois, I didn't speak English, even though I had been in the United States for a couple of years, because at home we spoke um, only Spanish. And so, like many of you and your children, I've had the experience of walking into school and you know having a completely um, different experience from what um, I had in my own home and having to make those adjustments. And so um, it's not easy and it's obviously something that as a school district we understand um, at every level of the organization that um, there are unique challenges that um, face families that come from other countries and we work really hard to make sure that we are reaching out and trying to make uh, the transition into the American school system a successful one. We have a tremendously committed group of um, people that work in this district for that purpose. And if you look back there, they're um, working extremely hard every day, obviously today translating um, my words and everybody else's words, but every day of the year, they're here for you to make sure that we as a school district are doing, are doing a good job for you. So um, I wanna recognize them for everything that they do because they are a very, very important part of our school system. Um, as Mrs. Valenzuela said, today is a really important step. Um, the American high school is a complicated experience and you know in Portland it's a little bit more complicated than it might be in other places because you have an important choice to make. What I'd like to emphasize is that we have outstanding choices. Every one of our schools is very committed to meeting the needs of your children. Every one of our schools is an outstanding option for your children. And you're gonna hear about those options today. And you don't have to make your decision today. I know that many of you already have relationships with the schools, and that's awesome. And many of you are just hearing about them for the first time. So we want you to you know, understand that today is just the first step in that process. There are lots of other opportunities. You're gonna meet the principals, you're gonna meet um, counselors from the buildings, they're going to talk to you about what makes their school unique and you know they're going to be around to help you today and in the future to understand those options so at the end of the day you choose the school that's right for your child. But the one thing that I want you to understand is that all three of those options are outstanding options and find the right one for your child because there's one that's going to be the right place for your child. And that's what we want you to do, and that's what today is all about. So again, thank you very much for coming out. One of the things that I know from my own experience is that for immigrant families, education is everything. For me, for my family, getting an education is what enables me to be here today. It's what enables you know, all of us to make progress in this country. And so, you know, I wanna thank you for your commitment to taking the time to learn about those options because I know that you care deeply about your children's education and your children are very fortunate to have you with your commitment to their education here today. So again, thank you very much. I know you're gonna find a great choice in the Portland Public Schools and thank you so much for being a part of our community. I would like to introduce Maureen Clancy. Maureen is the head of our um, multilingual department and she is the person that organizes all of this and she's also going to be walking us through the presentation today. So Maureen. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's 
wonderful to see so many faces here today. Um, I have the honor and the privilege of working with our interpreters across the district. And we now have 32% of our students' families speak a language other than English. So it's a very important part of what we do and how we serve our families. I will try to speak slowly. If any of the interpreters need me to slow down, just raise your hand and I will do that. And I remind that to the principals as well. Sometimes we speak faster than the interpreters can keep up with. Okay, so your kids are going to high school next year. And they may want to make a choice based on where their friends are going or what sports team they want to be on or some other reason, which are all valid. But we want to give you some information which will help you make the best choice for your child in his or her future. The other thing we want to do tonight is let you know that the ninth graders next year will be the first students to graduate with what we call now a proficiency-based diploma. So it'll be the first group to go through this new process. And so we wanted to give you a little information just to get you started. There'll be more coming as the months go on, but we thought it would be a good time to let you know some changes are coming up. If you've had high school students before, this will be a little different for your incoming freshmen. Okay, so next year when your kids start high school, they will have to accumulate courses and educational experiences to graduate, a certain number in a certain number of subjects to graduate, just like they have to do today. They will also get graded on their habits of work and learning, the things that they do to become a good student, to learn to study and, and follow the, I won't say rules, but learn how to be a good uh, student in school. And they will have to do a capstone project. I think this is something that already happens at Casco Bay, so those students are used to it. Not sure that that's true at our, they do, they already do. So this is something they already do. It's a, it's a project that kind of puts together their whole high school experience at the end. Something to show what they have learned and what they can do with their knowledge. And we've also added they have to have a specific written plan for what they plan to do when they finish high school. So, why are we changing to this new program of proficiency-based grading? One reason is because we have to. The state is regulating this for all public schools. And another reason is because we want to make sure that the students can use the knowledge that they were given more than taking a test, but they can actually prove that they can use this information in their life. So they can do this by taking coursework, like most of you did and most of us did, courses in high school. They can also do this by getting educational experiences in other ways. These are some of the ways they can take Classes, dual classes with college. They can do online learning courses. They can do community service, exchange programs. Now all of these things that they'll want to do will have to be approved through the school that are different than a coursework. But it's giving students opportunity to individualize their learning and do things that work for them to build that knowledge, to build the skills that they can use for their future. Habits of work and learning. So this is how the things the students do in school and outside of school to gather the knowledge that the teachers are giving them. This is how they'll be uh, evaluated. So homework, participation in class, treating others with respect. Some of you, if your kids go to King, I know they get hollow grades. Do they also get hollow grades at Lincoln? No, I know Casco. Uh, yeah. 
They're all get doing them now. So you, you're probably familiar. They get these extra grades in addition to their coursework, one through four. That's what they'll be getting next year as well. And it's separate than the coursework. It's a separate grade. But hopefully what you see is if they have good habits of work and learning, they also have good proficiency in the subject. That's the goal. So here's a little bit more information about that capstone project. A way to, for students to demonstrate what they are learning in high, high school with an emphasis on communication and problem solving skills. These are real important things as all of us know working in the world. As we came here today and it was a, there was another meeting in here and we couldn't quite set up, we had to use some problem solving skills, many of you saw this, in trying to set up all this equipment and time to get ready for tonight. Um, those are important skills for all of us to learn, um, to be functional in the world when we get out of high school and hopefully college from there. And it also gives students a chance to pick something that's very interesting to them, that they can learn more about and explore more um, during their experience in high school. And as I said, a post-secondary plan is another thing that they'll be doing. And this is something they'll do in conjunction with their teachers and, in, and uh, guidance counselors to help them decide what is the best plan for them going forward so they know what steps they need to take to be successful once they walk out of high school. Okay, so a little more details about this proficiency-based grading. So students will have to take one course or educational experience per year in English, language arts, math, science and technology, and social studies. Not too different than what we have today. They will also have to take over their course of high school one year of gym, physical education, health, visual arts, visual and performing arts. And then they also get five elective courses within those subjects. That could be a foreign language that they want to take, or an interest in art or music or more social studies, whatever is of interest to your student. They have five electives to take. So these are the things you want to track. Your child has to receive a three. They'll be graded on a one, two, three, or four. They have to get at least a three to get the credit for that course in a given year. And this is how the grading works. So instead of getting a 90 or an 80 or a 70, your children are going to be graded one through four. And the goal is three and above, right? Three says, I have become proficient in that skill. I'm meeting the proficiency standards. And as you can see, in three, there's ranges. So they can be within that three range for a while and hopefully get to that four. So when they're receiving ones and twos, that means they're still developing the skills to be proficient and using that information. Okay, so back to your choice of your three high schools. I want to highlight what's consistent across Portland Public Schools, and then the principals will highlight what's unique about their particular school. So all of our high schools offer clubs, sports, and extracurricular activities. All of our high schools have a guidance departments that support students through the high school years and with a post-secondary plan to go forward. All of them have the Make It Happen program. Is everyone familiar with that program? We have it in eighth grade too in all of our middle schools now. And it's a program that provides tutoring and extra support for students um, after school to help them with their coursework and their plan for college. All of our high schools are accessible by Metro. So no matter where you live in Portland, you can get to any of the three high schools. All of them hold parent-teacher conferences twice a year, every year. 
All of them have newsletters and other means of communicating with families. All of them challenge students. And all of them pr provide support for English language learners. So while you're making the choice for your student, some things to consider. The size and location of the school, the model, and the principals will explain the school models. Each school has their own specific model. The schedule of the year that they use, how they challenge students, and how they support students. And your child's interest and enthusiasm certainly weighs into the decision about the school they'll attend. So in preparing your students for high school, if you have students in high school, you know this. My son, myself, just started high school this year. So I know how the work kind of ramps up. And as a mom, I have to be really watching what he's doing, following up, setting routines, making sure he's studying. I wish he did it on his own, but I kind of have to make sure. Making sure he has a place to study and Hopefully, you are all learning to use Infinite Campus. And if you don't know how to use it, we're at the multilingual office happy to help you. Because Infinite Campus allows you to see how your student is progressing. You can see their grades, their attendance, their, what they're handing in, if they're handing it in late, and how they're doing so you can track over time. Sometimes. At least with my son, when he hasn't handed something in, he's not going to tell me he didn't hand it in. But I can check, and he now he knows I can check and follow up. So, and of course, parents are our first teachers, and certainly most important people in our children's lives. So it's you setting, setting the roles and the goals for your children at home and supporting that at home. And I know I certainly feel it myself with my own son, the pushing away, you know. And so more important, I try to, you know, hold on a little tight for those things. Let them know I care, even though he may not want to hear it all that often. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it over to each of the three principals in alphabetical order. That's the most fair way. And they're going to give you a short description of what's unique about their school. After they're done, I'm going to um, share with you the schedule, the timeline of making your decision. And Sound good? OK. So our first principal, and I'll remind the principals, please speak slowly. Hopefully, I'm speaking slowly enough um, to, so everybody can follow up. So the first principal is Casco Bay High School, Derek Pierce. Thank you, Maureen. Good evening. It's nice to see everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, my name is Derek Pierce, and I'm the principal of Casco Bay High School, and I'm proud to say it's my 12th year. And I'm also proud to say that I have two daughters who are also Portland Public School students and for one year only are, are with me at school this year. So I'm feeling especially, especially blessed this year. So as the superintendent said, we are so lucky in Portland to have three great options for all of our students. And to say a little more about than what Maureen said around what's the same, one thing to be clear that's the same is all students have the same graduation requirements. All students at, at all three of our schools will be working to get kids ready for college or whatever post-secondary option that they're pursuing. Career, gap year, work, um, but we want all kids to be college ready by the time they graduate. At Casco Bay, we build ourselves around three values. The first value is rigor. We want to push students to do things they never thought that they could do that really pushes them to grow academically, interpersonally, in how they connect with others, um, social-emotionally, how they interact with the world. 
we want to also have work that is as relevant as it is rigorous. We want work that is meaningful to kids, that helps them realize that their work matters to themselves and to the world. And third, we aim and care deeply to establish deep relationships. So rigor, relevance, and relationships. And the relationships are about connecting kids deeply to their, their staff members, to their peers, and to their community in the work that they do every day. Because our sense is that when kids um, and when your students feel connected um, to one another and to the school that they're in, they bring forth their best work. They become invested in their heart and in their head. And when they're invested in both places, that's when they may grow the most. The best way that I can try and demonstrate to you, oh, I'll say two things that are distinct about Casco Bay uh, among the three high schools. One is that we're smaller. We have about 100 students per grade, 400 overall. The purpose of being smaller is to give your students choice. Some students may want a smaller school, some students may want a larger school. Our hope by being smaller is that we can really, really get to know your student well and customize what we do to help them become their best selves. The other piece that's distinct, each of the schools has a model. We are part of a, of a national school network called EL Education, or Expeditionary Learning. What that means is that our students often engage in long-term interdisciplinary projects that result in students doing something gorgeous and excellent that hopefully um, betters the world along the way. To give a couple examples, I'll just tell you what our students are doing right now. Our ninth grade in two weeks from today will be presenting their vision for the future of Portland to the mayor um, and city councilors at City Hall. They've been studying what makes a great community and have been studying Portland as an example of that and will be presenting their ideas. Our sophomores, two weeks from tomorrow, will be presenting their ideas about how to address especially challenging issues in particular African countries and identifying organizations that are doing great work within particular countries to address those problems. And they've raised $3,000 from a dance and they will figure out how to best spend that money to do the most good for the most people with the issues they're solving, or the issues they're presenting about. Our juniors have just begun an investigation of how to um, deal with the gap, the growing gap between rich and poor in our country. And they're coming up with their own policy proposals to help address that. And they will have a symposium on income inequality in February. And finally, our seniors are doing something like the capstone project that Ms. Clancy spoke about. It's what we call Senior Expedition. And they are designing their own long-term project. And it is what we call the intersection of a personal passion and a need in the world. That is what their senior expedition is. Where, is. where is something they care about connect with something the world needs? And each student is designing and implementing their own project. 
So that's a little bit about Casco Bay. I'll just give you two resources and then I'll turn it over to Dr. Waltz. Um, this is our webpage, which you can get to right from the Portland Public Schools webpage. And I'll point out that we have here, right here, or I'm circling in the word here, um, we have some videos about the school in Arabic, Somali, and French that were created by students last year in a mini course. Ms. Dodson, right over there, our academic language teacher, worked with some students on. And these videos will do a better job than I've done in explaining what the school is about. And for those who speak Portuguese or Spanish, um, we'll work on getting some more videos this year and get some more students to create um, better communication tools than I have. And then the other thing to tell you is, you will hear from all the high schools that we're having an open house at our schools in the next six weeks. Ours happens to be first. Anybody know when it is? Well, it's a good thing I'm here to tell you. <laughs> it is next Thursday, week from tonight, at Casco Bay, um, 196 Allen Avenue, second floor from 6.30 to 8.30. And you are all invited. Thank you very much for listening. And I'll give this over, or I'll give it to Maureen. Thank you. All right, next up we have Deering High School and our principal, Ira Waltz. Thank you. As you've already heard, we do have very many similarities between the three high schools. It is wonderful that we have three outstanding high schools to choose from. And this is the one night a year that I really love speaking because I can pretend that I can speak in Somali, Arabic, Khmer, Vietnamese, French, and Portuguese because I am so envious of our students and our families that can speak more than one language. It is a skill that I wished I had. So with me this evening, I have Libby Hesselton, who is a guidance counselor for our ninth and 10th graders. I have Heidi Cameron, who is head of our English language learner program. And I have Dr. Ahmed, who is one of our assistant principals. So our model at Deering High School is the International Schools Study Network. And as you look at this picture, you can see that our open house is Wednesday, January 11th, 6 to 8. And I actually think I look better than this picture. If you agree, smile at me. I look better than that, don't I? Ah. <laughs> anyway, before I get talking about our model, I do want to say three things that I've learned as a high school principal. And they are to stay connected to your child, talk about goals and aspirations, then plan how you will work together to achieve this success. Please listen to School Messenger, and tap into Infinite Campus to keep a tab on your child. But more importantly, we invite you to come in and meet with us face to face. Please do that. And also, we want you to encourage participation in school, community, through clubs, activities, events, and or volunteering. Now, here are my daring differences that will help to inform your decision why daring may be a match for your child and for you and your entire family. We offer a four by four schedule, which means our schedule at daring, students take three or four courses from September to January, and they take a different three or four courses from January to 
to June. This will allow students to focus on three or four subjects at a time. And also, if your child has a passion for a specific content area, say English, math, science, art, music, over the four years, they can take an equivalent of eight years experience because of the semester schedule. Deering is the only member of the International Study School Network. And their mission for the International School Studies Network is to have all students college and career ready, like all the other schools, and globally competent. Only four pages. Um, we define global competence in four areas. When your child comes to Deering, they will investigate the world where students learn to identify problems and research the causes and possible solutions, very similar to what Principal Pierce was talking about. They recognize perspectives where students learn to see things from different points of view and to get clearer about their own point of view. They compare their views from others and learn from them. They communicate ideas where students learn to share ideas through writing, speaking, and technology. And for me, they make a difference in the world by taking action, whether it be in the community, in the school, or in the world. ISSN, International Study School Network, gives us guidance on how best to prepare our students to be globally competent. They have 43 elements, and I will talk about each one this evening. No. I'm going to talk about five characteristics. One is all students have opportunities to earn college credit through advanced placement courses. We offer 15 advanced placement courses at Deering High School. For example, we just added advanced placement human geography, which is open to freshmen. And then there are 14 courses that your students may take sophomore, junior, and senior year. Another characteristic, faculty and students use technology and new media to access international resources. We offer multimedia technology courses in advanced placement computer science. We have a student technology team that creates a weekly newscast in five different languages, which is then posted on YouTube. Three more characteristics to go, and I'll be finished. The school has a highly effective world language program. We offer Arabic, Mandarin, French, and Spanish. New to us this year, Arabic course you can take at Deering High School and earn University of Southern Maine credits. The school offers well-designed international simulations and model United Nations programs in which all students participate. We offer a course titled Global Issues, which is a required quarter-long course designed to give sophomores or 10th graders an opportunity to explore the world we live in today. All students will participate in a model United Nations simulation by researching and proposing resolutions to contemporary conflicts around the world. The final characteristic I will highlight, faculty, staff, students, and families who comprise the school community share a common vision and a mission for the school that is based on international focus, equity of admission, educational opportunity, and rigorous standards. So thank you for considering during high school. And we do have a, some students in here that know a lot about Daring, so feel free to ask them. And I encourage you to reach out to other families and other students, because they will give you the true lowdown. So thank you very much. Have a good night.
Hello, good evening. I'm Sheila Jepson, and I'm the principal at Portland High School. And I would like to deviate a little bit from my list here for a moment and just tell you that I am new at Portland High School. So I would like to tell you what my experience has been being a new person at Portland High, because you will be new. And, and also to say that I spent eight and a half years at Deering. So I know about our high schools. So my first experience at Portland High was this summer in July. I just started. And I was a little nervous. I didn't know the school. I knew some people in the school, but I wasn't really sure what I was going to experience, just like you aren't really sure. I walked in and I started meeting people. I met a lot of people. I talked with a lot of people. And as I got to meet people and, and hear from them about Portland High, I really began to understand what students experience. And here are some things that I think they experience. You will find opportunities for your students to be challenged. They'll be challenged in their academics. They'll be challenged to think beyond just what they see in a, a book or in the classroom. And they will increase their knowledge. And your students will be able to um, I, or choose courses where they can challenge themselves. So we'll start them where they are and take them where they want to go. The other thing I realized this summer, and as I got to know the school more, are the relationships that are, have been established at Portland High. Your students will experience those relationships with our teachers, with our support staff, and you, you will feel that connection when you come into the building and when you speak with teachers. I think the best way for you to experience any of our schools is to come and visit with us. And so our open house is on Thursday, January 5th, and that's when we invite you to come in and experience our building, our teachers, our programs, and we'll tell you a lot more information about Portland High and how that can work for your student. We also have another opportunity for you to come and share some information. We want to hear from you, and that is next Friday, we have what we're calling a shared space cafe at Portland High School. And I think you have a flyer in your hands of that. And that's an opportunity for us to learn from you. We want to hear from you about what you want for your students coming to Portland High. So we don't want to just talk to you about who we are. We want to hear from you about what you want for your children. So we invite you on December 9th to come and join us. One of the things that we also say about our school is that the city is our classroom because we're located right in the middle of the city on Cumberland Avenue so that we can walk to many places just right outside our, our dooryard. And so one of, the, one of the things that I learned about coming to Portland High this summer is the city is our classroom. And we hope that you'll experience that when you come see us on January 5th and if you choose Portland High for your student. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Okay, so now we've heard from our three high schools. And here's the timeline for making your choice. All eighth graders within their school day will do shadow days at each of the three high schools. So all of your students will have a chance to go when school is in session and be part of the school day. You will see, receive an application or your student will receive a Casco Bay High School application from their school. You have to apply to attend Casco Bay High School. It does, if we have more than enough applicants than slots, there's what we call a lottery. So there is a deadline of March 2nd to put your application in for Casco Bay. No, sorry, 
February 15th is the deadline, right before February vacation. Sorry, it's a form, not an application. It's a form that says, I would like to be considered for Casco Bay High School. Fill it out, it goes in the lottery if we need one. They will let you know because by March 10th, your student has to put in the letter of commitment of which school they're going to go to. And that is so the schools, trust me, the guidance counselors will tell you, they have to set up a schedule for the next year for all of the, your kids, plus all of the other kids in high school. So they need time to get that ready. So that's the big date that we need to know. February 15th, right before vacation, and March 10th. If the schools does, do not receive a letter of commitment from your family, your child will be assigned to the school based on where you live. So if you live on the peninsula, they'll be assigned to Portland High School. For instance, if you live out in Deering Center, they would be assigned to Deering. So if you don't choose and send that letter, they will be assigned by that point. Does that make sense?